Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumene Lezondi with your technology and social media news. We hope you are staying at home and keeping safe where you are and leaving the house only if you really, really have to. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. With reports coming out of France suggesting that Orange is planning an expansion into Nigeria and South Africa. This week, our Twitter poll is asking you if you think South Africa has space for one more telecoms network provider. Results of that are coming up later in the program. Firstly, here's what's coming up tonight. We look at the possible future after COVID-19. We meet Batabi Lembofu, who's created science experiment kits for children to do at home. In our discussion, we chat to Kim Chulu Mokange about gaming. COVID-19 has resulted in a massive digital disruption. And some of what we've adopted because of COVID-19 is likely to stay once lockdowns are over and once we have properly dealt with the pandemic. In their global e-commerce prediction, reportslinker.com suggests that online shopping will reach 6.07 trillion US dollars by 2024. Worldwide, online shopping is being aided by COVID-19 as people are urged to stay at home and shop online. For our consumers, we provide an alternate, alternative payment mechanism to cards. So for either those who do not have a credit card or for those who do not wish to use a credit card because of the inherent risks um, attached to that payment mechanism. Um, for our merchants, OZO provides a payment service for a far lower price than card payments and we lessen the reliance on cash both from a physical perspective but also from a, a reconciliation burden on, on customers having to manually transfer funds to merchants. OZO says they have developed contactless technologies ranging from QR codes to SMS to help even the small and medium-sized businesses for this. They largely rely on AWS Cloud for support. Amazon Web Services or AWS have lessened the burden that OZO had on maintaining our own infrastructure. It also allowed us to scale up with ease during busy periods and handle massive volumes of transactions. But we can also scale down in the quiet periods and that's important because you only pay for what you use so there's quite a bit of cost savings involved there. As most children in South Africa have to go back to school for learning to continue, schools will need the right kind of tech support as things can't go back to normal. The world after COVID-19 will be a highly digital one and schools have to include tech tools in their learning. Now that the schools are, are using Zoom, to conduct their day-to-day -day operations or learning, you know. Health checks at work and in many public buildings are likely going to be something we do in future. While there are employees who share their frustration at remote working, a survey by Digiteer has found that it has increased productivity. This has even forced technophobes to embrace what they resisted. All the generation which is the age group that has been affected mostly by, by uh, the pandemic will now embrace uh, technology because um, back, back then the fear that we had as people in tech was that we had difficulties penetrating the market with the older generation because they still wanted to write things on paper, they still wanted to read the newspaper at your print, not uh, online. So Would you like a pet or a smooch? Hello there. Working remotely means machines will also start doing a lot of tasks that used to be done physically. This means job losses. A lot of factories are now going into automation and that is uh, looking like a lot of job losses. We've already seen uh, currently the, the, the numbers dropping uh, on, on, on the amount of people that are employed. With increased unemployment, in an economy like ours, there will be increased crime. The drivers of crime have increased because of lockdown. Those drivers are the disparity between a middle class and a lower LSM, as well as the size of the unemployment rate in the country. So people are urged to use technology again to beef up their security. 
in this technology-driven security sector is oversight, remote oversight of your premises, of your home or of your commercial property in the form of apps. Um, and we believe that um, monitoring your home or monitoring your commercial property through an app remotely is very key to the future of, of security in the country. While COVID-19 has resulted in a massive digital disruption, a lot of what we are discovering now will stay post our lockdowns. A lot of South African children are continuing with their schoolwork from home. And a struggle with some is how they are going to do their science experiments. Science and mathematics learning is what can actually help a lot of children get into technology professions. But Tabile Mpofu has developed a solution that can help children do this at home. So in this reaction, we're going to look at the effect of potassium iodide in hydrogen peroxide. My name is Batabile Mpofu. I'm the managing director at Kazimulo Applied Sciences. The idea started um, when I worked at university as a technician. So what I would see there is a lot of learners battling to do science experiments in the lab. And I could relate to what these students were going through because that's the problem that I also went through when I was in high school, where I had to learn science you know, from a textbook but without the experience of doing the science experiments. So while um, I was at Varsity, I thought, initially I thought the government needs to do something about this, but then I later realized that I can actually do something about it. And so I developed this portable science kit so that young people can do, get to do science experiments themselves. This kit is really specifically for use by those kids that, you know, that need to do science experiments at home. Because if the learners only go to do science experiments at school, the ones that could do the experiments at school, now they are unable to go to school and they need to be at home. And obviously the kit has got experiments that are laid out in the curriculum. So it's re it really is, a, it, it presents a perfect opportunity for those learners uh, to catch up with, the, you know, with, with their lessons and to not, not to have this pandemic uh, influence, uh, badly influence their learning. I initially targeted um, parents of kids that go to schools where the school does not have uh, a lab, uh, where they don't do science experiments. And, and we priced it in such a way that those parents can actually afford those kids. And as the learners learn, obviously, at school, then they, they can either use the kit at school or at home to do the science experiments. We have different kits. We've got one kit for learners in grade 8 and 9. And then we've got a separate kit for grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. Uh, these kits are, are portable and they range from um, 849 rands to 1050 rands. And obviously they come with the instruction manual and all the items that the learners need to perform uh, the, the science experiments, including beakers, chemicals, and uh, apparatus that they need to mix and, and those kinds of things. Sometimes you find that one has a passion for motor mechanics, but they didn't get the opportunities and the education to get into the field. SABC News reporter Simpiwe Makanya met up with one such person in the rural areas of Dafelkop in Guazulu Natal. Denis' parents could only take him up to grade 11. Then the funds dried out. But he believes that one's poor background should not determine one's future. I've always loved using my hands. One day I thought I should just make a wire car and make something that would carry me. And I did. He hopes to showcase his amazing skills on an international platform one day where his talent will be nurtured and refined. I love to use my skills for a bigger organization and help them develop a new vehicle.
It is a CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za on email. After the break, we look at gaming as Africa's biggest gaming events are going digital this time around. And this is because of the lockdowns that we are currently facing. <music> It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome back. Now, Rage is Africa's biggest gaming expo. This year, they've announced that they will not have a physical event, but they will have an online event. All details will be made available to everybody once they know what that will look like. These are the scenes that gamers and geeks have grown to love. Computers, gaming and technology. Any techno geeks paradise. Rage is Africa's biggest gaming expo. It had been planned for November this year, but the physical event has now been cancelled. They're going virtual. No new date has been announced for the virtual Rage. The decision was taken as a result of the spread of COVID-19, which is yet to peak in South Africa. This comes after it was announced that Comic-Con and Telcom VS Gaming won't be physical events as well this year. Telcom VS Gaming is Africa's biggest gaming tournament and gaming is actually a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. But how big is it really here in South Africa and the rest of the African continent in general? To have that conversation with me is a gamer games developer and lecturer Kim Chulumukenge. Kim Chulumukenge, thank you very much for being a part of our network. Now we've heard that Telcom VS Gaming League, which is Africa's biggest gaming league, is going virtual. Uh, do you think that there is a need for South Africa to have a gaming league? Yeah, I do believe that South Africa is in need of a league. Um, while the league VS Gaming has been there for quite some time and it's been uh, a, a good boost in terms of the industry itself but mainly for the players because the consumption of gaming console in the country has actually already been good uh, the numbers um, the purchases of games and console has been very good so being able to give them an opportunity to compete for those who want to be professionals uh, professional gamers it's actually a very good opportunity for them and then also just boosts the the, the industry specifically um, and also that allow us to also have uh, a certain uh, group of people that can be considered as, as, as uh, a sampling uh, group if you have your game and you would actually like them to try it out they already have um, a good test of what good games are and and, and how they should be performing and how they should be playing. So that would actually be interesting to now have such uh, professional players, uh, people that be on a regular basis, to also be part of uh, your um, testing users whenever you actually build a game and you would actually like to put it on, on console or on one of those big platforms. So I think it's very good for the industry and also for the country on that entertainment side to also be put on the map um, through um, these leagues and VS Gaming is actually allowing that as well. How inclusive is a virtual gaming league? It is uh, one thing that will probably make it, um, uh, will broaden uh, their, their, um, the user base a little bit more. And I'm saying this because you, you have now this growth in terms of internet usage and people being at home uh, for longer time than they would have actually been if they had to go to varsity or things like that. And that is giving an opportunity to actually have uh, people playing more games. And even with the data that has been shared, especially in the United States, there's been a uh, growth in terms of purchases of games and in terms of playing games and time being spent playing games during this pandemic time because of the fact that you guys are restricted and you have to be at home so you also do find more people now rely mostly on um, internet usage from from their from their homes which means they need to have good 
uh, coverage for that. And for that, you need to have either fiber uh, or anything that is good enough for you to actually be um, accessing the internet easily and comfortably at home. Just over a week ago, we also heard PlayStation saying that they will be releasing PS5 later in the year, and they've told us about the new features of the new PlayStation. What's new about the PS5? It was quite interesting that they did share a lot more about um, the games that are actually will, that will be coming um, soon with the, with the PS5. Uh, or um, the games that have been partnering with, with Sony in terms of um, testing the capabilities of, of the PS5 and what it's capable of providing and, and, and all of those things. So that is the interesting part. That is the, the nice part of it um, to realize that they've already, they've already uh, they, they showed to us um, what they've already been working on and and what what should we expect what what will be the increase or the the, the, the betterment in terms of the games and what is being provided the, um, the the response that you actually get from the controllers so the controllers which can actually be used now differently because of motion sensors now you can use that for your racing games for example which is which has not been done easily with, uh, well, not even easily, but which has not been done in the previous, the previous, uh, with the previous controllers. All right, and what's better between the upcoming PS5 and the upcoming Xbox? There are people that are just lovers of the specific uh, machine and not of the other, and that sometimes make it a little bit difficult uh, in terms of engaging with, um, with that particular point. But there are certain details that would actually give us uh, a certain indication to what could actually be performing better than the other. And those are just based on the, the features and the data that we have on, on, on the hardware um, part of the, the consoles. Uh, for example, the PS5, the CPU is actually 8 core and um, it's 3.5 gigahertz whilst the xbox series x is the cpu is actually eight core as well but 3.8 so you can see there is a difference uh of 0 0.3 uh between the two but then that could actually mean quite something uh for the other console in terms of um, the capacity in terms of how, how quick it can actually perform, how fast it can actually perform. So those are not things that you would take lightly because they are important um, elements, um, though it's not that much. You are a video games developer yourself, uh, but how popular is video games development in South Africa and do we really have video games developers here? There is no specific education for those who actually want to go and play. but. We do have that as well because we see the growth in terms of the consumption of game on consoles and on PCs and on mobile. Um, but then the biggest area here in terms of where people need to understand is the understanding needs to be um, provided to the people in the sense of uh, how they will need to be educated around certain things and i'm not saying the education is now suddenly we now have to teach people how to download a game on the store but it's finding various ways that we can communicate that this is accessible to you and those could come through partnership when you actually have a partnership let's say with a telecommunication uh, company and when they can actually see the 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 result of how we can actually have better communication better engaging uh formats of of communication through games that can already start pushing um the various developers into developing more and that would also allow consumers who already consume uh, any product from the telecommunication company to consume the game via that specific, you know, telecommunication company. Or it could also be with artists, right? Um, we have seen, for example, the game Kim Kardashian. And um, 
the the studio that builds that game ended up having that partnership and then they managed to build something and if we see the result of 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 that specific game and the download you would see how that would have boosted the specific developer uh, or the specific studio into the growth of what they what what they've been doing and what they currently do so having such partnership such openness and i think the understanding is probably around the other people it's not it's not around it's around the people that are making businesses on a daily basis to see the need of these kind of medium it's not necessarily around those who are developing it and those who are um probably uh consuming Kim Trudemukenge, thank you very much for being a part of our network. It is a CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Here's what else took place in the rest of the world in the technology sector. Comic book and gaming enthusiasts will be disappointed to know that there will be no Comic-Con Africa held in Johannesburg this September. This is of course due to the banning of large gatherings because of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, fans will also be thrilled to know that the con must go on, but this year's show will be delivered with a twist. What we've said is that the con must go on line. So we're bringing a whole virtual event for exactly the same dates, 24th to the 27th of September. Um, and we've got four days of really exciting content that you would expect to see at a, at a live event. Organizers also announced that they have prepared a plan to roll over existing tickets to 2021 with the price freeze or to refund any ticket holders who request it. And now in Israel. The country's NSO group showcased a new anti-drone defense, giving the public a rare look at its technology as it seeks to counter allegations that another of its products has aided privacy breaches and political surveillance. The new system, Airclips, hijacks intruding drones. We'll see the exact route or the flying uh, area of the drone getting closer and closer towards the stadium. Once the drone will get into the no-flight zone that was defined in the system, the system will start working on taking the communication stream of that specific drone and land it in a safe area. That process of uh, taking the communication stream instead of the original operator and landing it in the safe area might take a few seconds. They also sought to highlight a heightened transparency drive, saying that NSO has declined deals worth around 500 million US dollars on ethical grounds and, as of next year, will issue annual compliance reports. And now in the UK. Chinese telecoms giant Huawei says it remains as committed as ever to providing British network operators with the best available equipment to allow UK citizens to enjoy the full benefits of 5G services. As the company's UK communications director dismissed reports that Huawei's role in Britain was under threat. To remind people and remind Britain of our commitment to the UK, that we wanted to state very clearly Huawei's commitment to the UK, building a better connected UK, working with our customers, the telecoms operators in the UK, to make sure people have good connectivity, be that fixed or fibre connectivity or mobile connectivity, either 3G, 4G or of course now 5G. Meanwhile, a senior official for British Telecom's firm Vodafone has warned that the UK's hopes of leading the world in 5G technology would be dealt a terminal blow if the government removes Huawei from the country's telecoms infrastructure, a report in the Financial Times said on Wednesday. According to news agency Reuters, which quoted a French publication, Le Echo, French telecommunications company Orange is planning an expansion into South Africa and Nigeria. This week, our Twitter poll is asking you if you think there is space for one more telecommunications network provider in South Africa. Now, 52% of you say yes, there is space for another telecommunications network provider in South Africa. There's a 25% of you who say no, there isn't.